Good morning, everyone. Hi, Brina, Wanda, Pamela, Stephanie, Julie, Denise. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope everyone's doing well. Hi, Karen. Thanks for sharing. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully all very well. I just have a baby wipe because when you work with the um, craft ink, which unless you have old ones, the only one that's still around is the craft ink, the white. Um, you don't want to really rub this onto your, I guess you could do it on your chamois, but it's easier to clean it off if you have like a baby wipe or a wet paper towel. So that's why I have that ready for it just in case. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Hi, Pam. Good morning, Donna. Thank you all for uh, the love. I appreciate it. So I'm going to just start off with just a quick note and then we'll go uh, rogue as usual. I hope you uh, like my pirate paper. I printed this on this by accident, but once I did it, I was like, well, I'm not going to reprint it. Someone's having a pirate birthday party in case you didn't guess. So uh, the extra extra promotion is still going on through the end of the month, which is August 31st. So if you would like to join my team, I would love you on my team. You can purchase $155 worth of product, anything you want, even the holiday catalog, which I will be getting my holiday catalog order on Friday. Thank goodness. Um, for just $99. And then you'll also get a $10 coupon code to use the month after you join. So really $165. So you could put that towards your shipping. That way you could like say that you had free shipping. You could use it towards a product that maybe you really wanted. Um, but if you go to my website, so you can either go to www.reachthestamper.stampinup.net and there is a box that will say on the right, it says join now. And if you follow that, you just have to fill out the agreement. There is no requirement to sell, to buy or anything else. So you can just join for the one time, be a hobby demonstrator and get a discount. Or if you really decide to throw some extra fun into your life, you could start doing videos, but that's up to you guys. I do have a lot of people here today. Suzanne is on my team. Thanks, Suzanne. Thank you for joining. And I believe I saw somebody else, and now I can't remember who it is. So, again, thank you all for stopping by today. Um, but, again, if you have any questions about this, you can always send me an email as well. So, no worries. If you have questions, just let me know. So today, what we're going to do, and I came up with this idea, I don't have any samples, but I was uh, kind of perusing around uh, Pinterest and Facebook, and I thought it would be neat if we used, and I'll show you a couple things we can do extra, but I've kind of figured we would focus on the Friend Like You um, stamp set, not necessarily the dies, we'll see, maybe we'll do one of those as well, but I thought it would also be neat to use the um, stitched nested label Ooh, that's a mouthful. The stitch nested label dies um, to kind of put something onto another paper. And what my thought is, and then I just got these other couple out for having um, like maybe something run across the background. So that'll make a little bit more sense once we get started. But what my thought was, and I have two, uh, three different sets of color combos. So I'm going to show you what I picked and then we'll kind of decide where we're going to go with this. So my thought was if you had a lighter base card, so this is Flirty Flamingo, and then you picked something that was kind of in the same hue. Now pink and Mellow Mambo, I wouldn't say they're necessarily in the same color family, but they're both a, like a pinkish color. So that's kind of why I picked that. If anybody has a better idea, you probably could use even maybe Melon Mambo and Lovely Lipstick. Now that I think about it, that might even work a little bit better. I think I'm going to do that instead. So I'm swapping out the Melon Mambo. Because now that I look at it, I think the other way will look better. So what we're doing is a light base, and then we're going to cut out a um, one of the nested labels with a darker color. And then we're going to do Versamark on this, but then carry it over in either white craft ink. And if it's not enough, that's why I thought we might add white embossing powder. And then the other ones I picked were, of course, you know, my favorite, Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay. And then the last one I picked, I tried to pick from different color schemes, were um, Seaside Spray and Pretty Peacock. So you probably could also do another good one just thinking about it now, which sometimes it's easier to do it with your actual ink pads. You could probably do Terracotta Tile 
and Cajun Craze because these are kind of the same tone. So that would be another one you could do. I'm sure there's some really nice yellow ones you could do. And I would think if you would do that, maybe you would do like Daffodil Delight and Mango might go well together. Um, another one you could do pro probably would be maybe Rich Razzleberry and Blackberry Bliss. But these are kind of close in color, so I don't know how that would work. Or maybe Cherry Cobbler and Rich Razzleberry. I think Mary Merlot is a little too red and purple so those might not go so well together but you can kind of play around with your cards and see so organized you're hilarious that's funny this is the first time my desk has been clean and I don't even know how long but thanks for the compliment Jennifer I try um so <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to try these and I'm going to just pull out um a base and I think I have some bases and I don't really think it matters which way so I'll pull out a piece of flirty flamingo I have a lot apparently this must have been a class that I did because I have a lot of um, lovely lipstick cut up already and no bigger pieces than that so there's those and of course we'll add some white in but I thought this would be kind of like a fun something to do just to try something different and we'll go with the same one I'll go with another one so that's um, Coastal Cabana and this one I'll use for now I might have to grab a different piece depending this one has some adhesive sheet on it but it might make it work we'll see and then for the last one I have again seaside spray and I'll tell you I don't have a lot of scraps of this peacock because I must really like this color I saved this one for like the bitter end so I'm just gonna cut this in half and just keep a half piece there and then of course we'll add some um, whisper white but what my plan is, we will start with, I'll just start with this one since it's on top. We're going to start with this and we're going to see how it goes to basically do what I want to do. So we have one that's the opposite shape. So most, the other two were um, hot dogs, hamburgers, if you don't know the difference. Basically these would be like a half sheet of cardstock. So this is four and a quarter by 11, squirt five and a half. And then this is opposite. This is uh, four, eight and a half by five and a half squirt four and a quarter so they're just two different shapes of cards so we're going to fold this one over and then this is going to just be a piece that we cut out so what I want to do is I'm going to try to kind of eyeball so if we were to use this oh you know what let me grab my snips before I forget I don't know where my piercer is but yesterday I was adding some labels in case you haven't done this, these are the, the um, cling mount stamps. So I just finally labeled my clear mount stamps. And then I just put little pieces of cling onto the back of them so they stick. They're pretty small pieces, if you can see that or not. But it's like right here. And then they stick really well. So if you have extra pieces, don't forget that. I do have a video on YouTube for that on how to do it. It's very, very simple. But anyway, I'm missing something here, which is why this is falling. So I'm going to move this over. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is, if we're going to do this this way, I might have to change it to this direction. We will grab our nested die, because I don't want it to be too big that it kind of takes over the whole card. So if we went with this size, it would really take up a lot of the card, and it might still turn out okay, but I think I'm going to go down one. So I'm going to go to the second largest die, and then, ooh, Geez, I'm so sorry. Hopefully I didn't make anybody nauseous. Sorry about that. <laughs> and then I'm going to cut this out and then we'll put this together. Wow, if that doesn't wake you up, I don't know what will, right? All right, so what my plan is, I'm going to Versamark this one. And then I'm going to go with the white pigment ink first. We'll see what this looks like. If it doesn't look good, we will move on from there. But before I do that, let me close this up real quick. I'm just going to run this through the Big Shot. And you can use either platform for this. I just have the magnetic platform up there still. So, and since this piece is a full, almost a full sheet, I'm going to just slightly put the die askew because you don't want to run it through straight because it puts a lot of pressure on the uh, straight lines. So you can kind of put it like a little bit to the side. We'll just go like that. And I also did a video. I did finish vid uh, uploading it 
but I have to write up the blog post for it. So um, once I get that done, I'll share it with you. I made a really cool card for a little friend the other day, so that was cool. Okay. It's a Beatles card, if that gives you any idea. And let me tell you what. So he's seven, and he loves the Beatles. Christian loves the Beatles as well. But um, I think he was really surprised, and it was really hard to find a card. Now that I'm looking at it, that might be a little too small. What do you guys think? Do you think we should go the next size up so it's a little bit more space? We could. I'm going to cut one while we're at it. We'll see what it looks like. That way, once I decide, at least we'll have like two options cut just in case, and we'll know for the next one. So I'm just going to run this through one more time. But he asked for a Beatles t-shirt, and um, I burned him some Beatles CDs, and I told his parents when they get tired of hearing those same songs over again to let me know, and I will make them some new ones that they can be annoyed with. Which I think is just hilarious, but hilarious for me anyway. Okay, so here we go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pick something that we're going to go across with. And I'm going to pick something simple first because this is kind of how I envision this with something that was kind of simple. So we can do one of two things. We can either do the um, cattails or we can do the flowers. And I just want to see which one might be larger. I'm going to do, I'm going to do the flowers for now. So I'm, I will put the tops on, but I'm going to do the bottom separate. And then hopefully you guys will understand where I'm going with this. Okay. So we're going to start first with the Versamark. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set both of these up. That way I can go back and add this after the fact. And let me grab my Stampin' Pierce mat here. And I just cleaned this off the other day, so hopefully I won't end up with any stains on the other side of my card. All right, so what I'm going to do is kind of pick a line. So even if we were going to go with the, the larger one, we're going to start, and I think I might go with the smaller now that I see what I want to do. We're going to start about maybe like a quarter of the way up from the card. Okay, so here's where we're going to start. Oh, there's Avonel. Avonel's another person on my team. Thanks for stopping in. All right, so I'm going to put this about here. And when you do with when you do this with Versamark, what it does is it's giving like a watermark effect. If you want it to be a little bit darker, the other thing you could do is you could use um, the same color. So you could use Seaside Spray instead. So that's up to you. So if you do want it a little bit darker, that's what you would do. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the flowers. So I'm just going to go in and ink up the flowers. And I'm going to kind of fill these in. And I'm not going to fill the tops because regardless, this probably is going to cover. I guess I could do it a little bit. It's not going to hurt. All right, so there is that portion. So we're done with the Versamark for now. And again, if you want it darker, you could just use the same color. So now I'm going to grab my Craft White ink. So... I'm not sure. Mine is obviously super duper old. I believe when they are sending this out now, they were sending sending it uninked because it was so inked before that it was um, leaking all over everything. So I feel like when you get this, you will get an uninked pad. And it could be a spot by now, but I think it's back to a pad. And then you'll get the refill. So it's always helpful to get the refill because this does stay pretty wet. But if you ever want to do any like splatter techniques, this is a great thing to have as well. So if you're getting the pad, you might as well get the ink pad as well. So I'm going to go with this. And I think I'm going to end up adding something on the bottom just to cover up this line here. But what I'm going to do is I'm kind of eyeballing this. And where it is? I just had... I had a zillion pieces of scrap paper. Since this is white ink, I definitely want to make sure that I cover up my... It'll come off of here, but it's just easier. I'm going to cover up my mat. And then all I'm going to do, even though I did this in Versamark, it's not going to matter. I'm going to just ink this up. And you want to make sure when you look at it that you have a really nice coverage. And we're going to do it like that. One thing about this, it does take some time to dry. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind. I'm going to do just a little one here. 
I probably could have done a small one in the middle, but I don't want to overdo it. So now I'm going to just take my baby wipe, wipe this off, and then you could go ahead and uh, if you have a microfiber cloth or something, these are just from the, either I think I got these at Costco, it's a huge pack, just clean it off. And then I'm going to do the same with the flowers. So hopefully this will turn out how I have it envisioned in my mind, we'll see. Go like that. And like that. That looks pretty good. All right, so what I'm going to say is this one we're going to do this way. And I'm going to do a different one um, with the white embossing powder as well. And actually what I'll do is I'll do one with Versamark and white. And I'll do one with Craft Ink and white. And we'll see which one we like better. So this does need to dry. Okay, so I'm going to set this on the side. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to layer these on top of each other. And we can even move this down so they're kind of all in the same line if we wanted to. We can move it up a little bit. I am going to probably pop this up. Um, what I'm going to do now, just because I have it out, is I'm going to use the little wavy lines from that stamp set. And I'm going to just fill in just a little bit here. Let me see. Just to kind of take away that edge a smidge. It's not really super dark. Kind of just trying to soften the bottom a little bit. I'm going to do one in the middle so it kind of makes the lines meet. All right, so not sure if I love that or don't love it, but we'll see once it's all put together. So there's that. This does need to dry. So you can do one of two things. Since we're going to make more cards, I'm going to just move on and we'll finish this one at the end. But you can either hit this with your heat tool if you're in a hurry and you want to dry it, or you can set it on the side. So your choice. So I'm just going to set that one up here. Put this on top. Put that up here. Make sure I think all these are clean. I'm going to close this up. And then we're going to move on to our other color. So I'm going to bring in something different for the background. But my question is, and I'm going to take this as a, a poll. Do we think this this one is big enough that way it lets more of the background show? Because I kind of like this size. What do you guys think? I think it feels like it's... <laughs> Donna, you are making me crack up like the Waltons. Night, John boy. Night, Paul. Night, Ma. It's like Romper Room or the Waltons, depending on which way you want to go with it, right? Big enough. Okay, so I'm going to stick with that. All right, I'm going to move this off. And real quick, I'm just going to cut the other two. That way we have them ahead of time. So again, we're going light for the base, dark for the, um, for the uh, stitched, nested, labeled die that goes with the birds. It's like a mouthful. All right, so I'm going to cut both of these out. And then we'll move on from there. So at the end of this, now granted, you know, we're doing this as we go along because you know how I am. I'm not the kind of person that seems to think of ideas ahead of time. So I think I can cut this from here. Almost. Not quite. All right. I'm going to have to use this piece. No biggie. So I kind of go with these as I go along. So that's why sometimes if you feel like I don't. We don't really make our decisions until we're finished with the card. So once you know what you're doing, you could really crank out a couple of these cards quickly. And then the other thing you could do, so there's that one, is since we cut this one bigger, we could even layer this somehow on the inside of the card. So we'll figure that out when we're done. Go like that. I don't have any scraps of the lipstick apparently some of these I think I really really love like I have almost no balmy blue left because I use that as a as a um, background for a bunch of cards that we made I think it was in our July class our stamp club class and we actually believe it or not used the same stamp set and we made one with lots of layers that had vellum it was really really pretty all right so we're going to do the same thing again except we're going to change this up just slightly so I'm just folding these so I have them all ready. So I'll put this one on the side. So what we're going to do is we will follow the same pattern. Now, just to change it up a little bit, I'm going to use Flirty Flamingo as the color instead of Versamark. And then for this one, what we'll do is we will use the White Craft ink 
No, for this one, we're going to use Versamark and the white embossing powder. When we do the last one, what I'll do is I'll use Coastal Cabana ink for this. And then I will use white craft ink and white embossing powder, just so we can see the difference of, you know, what everything looks like. So for this one, let's see, let's see if I can find a different image that might look neat. You know what I'm going to use? I'll use this. We'll still kind of stick with the same thing. I'm not really sure what the specific theme will be. And here, I'm going to just show you this real quick, just in case you missed this, because... I know Gail shared this the other day, but I think it's always helpful to share it more than once. So if you have leftover pieces here, all you have to do is, and you know what would be really helpful if I could find my paper piercer. Oh, found it. Okay, so what you do is you generally just kind of snip the strips down so they're big enough. So since this one is a little bit bigger, I'm going to use this piece here. So what I do is I cut it almost to the end. Make sure that one's cut through. So I cut it almost to the end. And then I'll take my uh, my paper piercer and I kind of just slide it under. And usually this works really, really well when you're not being filmed. Because <laughs> I did a whole bunch of them last night and they were so, so fast. Oh my gosh. There we go. I got the edge off. So if you stick it underneath, you probably could also use your um, spatula end of your take your pick tool. Let's see. I got the tacky. Yep. Okay. So all you do is you pull this off and I tend to leave a piece connected here only because it's easier to hold it to the paper. So just pull that off. So right here, this is sticky. This still has the, um, the paper, the release paper on it. You just take your stamp and you press it and then you peel it up and then I, you probably can't see that, but there's a rectangle right here. So see really sticky. So very simple. Oops. And then we'll just add this one instead. All right, so then I can rearrange these things now that I found where that was. Sorry about that little digression there, but I'm always trying to at least show you guys stuff, even if you may have seen it before, because I think sometimes <clears throat> the more you see it, it might make you more apt to actually try it yourself. Because I know a lot of times people are like, well, I don't want to ruin my stuff. I'll just keep it how it is. Okay, so for this one, I'm actually going to start at the bottom. And I'm going to kind of vary the heights. And I know this is probably going to be covered up some. But we'll just make it look nice anyway. Okay. So there's that. And we're going to put this one on like that. Okay. So close the flirty flamingo. So again, this was very much tone on tone. Because we use exactly what we have. So I'm going to clean this off. And then I'm going to. Do one more thing real quick. I am going to hit it with my uh, embossing buddy. Even though I know it's pretty humid in summer. It seems like whenever you don't want something to stick, it sticks. So, okay. So I am going to do Versamark and then white embossing powder. So again, I still did not fix my, um, my boss. I didn't hook it yet because I brought the wrong size um, zip ties up. So I'm turning this one ahead of time. So bear with me. It will be a little loud. But if I had it fixed properly, then it would work the way I want it to. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just put Versamark on this. Do a smaller one. And God knows I have enough zip ties. I just keep grabbing the ones that are the wrong size. Is that the right side I did that on? Yes. All right, so there's that. I'm going to take my white embossing powder and I'm going to dump this on here. Now, if you ever get a spot, because it seems like no matter how well you do it, there's always something. What I'll do is I usually have a little paintbrush handy and I'll just dust off the spot I don't want to be done could technically be the embossing buddy, but I figured better to be safe than sorry. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to put this back in because the last time I didn't, if you remember, we had a craft catastrophe. I had embossing powder or glitter or something all over the place. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to put this here. 
and I'm not going to heat on this because if you do heat on this, it actually makes it bubble. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just kind of move it around. You do want to make sure you keep it moving because with white embossing powder, you can actually singe it and it'll look like it got burned and that's not going to be pretty for anybody. You can do it from both sides to help melt it faster. And it does turn shiny, so it's kind of like the rest of the embossing powder. When it's actually heated all the way, instead of being powdery, it will be shiny. So I don't know if you can tell that is, but it is shiny. So there's that. Do want to kind of give it like a second to cool down. And then if you want to, I don't have one up here, but if you want to get rid of it, if you have a, um, a dry Swiffer cloth, all you have to do is rub it and it will get the rest of that embossing buddy stuff off. So just pretend like this is your Swiffer. And there you go. If you're worried about the wonkiness, you can always run this through. Also, um, you can run it through like a p with a piece of paper and put it through your die cutting machine. It'll flatten it out, out a little bit. But so there's going to be that one. Now we do still have to add some sort of a sentiment to this, but it's kind of like a simple background is what we're going for. So that's number two. And I'm going to put this over here. That one's actually dry. So I'm going to put this oops, back on top. All right, so now we just have to finish, and I'm going to clean this off. What did I use? Versamark. Clean this with my pad. Yeah, so I'm super excited because my, um, my holiday pre-order comes in on Friday, which will be fun for everyone in my stamp club because they will get their catalogs on Friday then, which is super cool pull this out. I've been, um, when I was having these not labeled, I've been keeping them in this, but then once I usually add the stickers, like the sticky stickers to them, I kind of take this out because they tend to, as you can see, they stay in place pretty well. So there's that one. All right. So for the last one, we have Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay. So, <coughs> excuse me, we could use, how about we'll use the Verdant Garden because it's kind of like flowy and something different than what we've done thus far. All right. Hi, Donna. Thank you guys all for joining. I don't have a hole for my bone folder. You know what, though? I made do with mine. But I am getting, um, what did I order? I'm trying to remember if I ordered the MVP. Thank you to Donna. The MVP 2.0 or the long one. I can't remember which one I ended up getting, but Whichever one it is, I'll show it to you guys when I get it. But I am looking forward to getting that long thing as well because I think that'll be helpful because I do have eight bazillion of these, which I think we could add to this a little bit too might be cute. <laughs> but that's a side note. Okay, so for this one, what I said I was going to do is I'm going to use Coastal Cabana ink. So it'll be more tone on tone. It'll be a little bit darker. And then we're going to ink this one with the white craft ink and the white embossing powder. Okay, so let's get this started. We'll see what this looks like. I know they are some nice color combinations, aren't you? Aren't you surprised? Sometimes it just pops out at me. Other times not so much, but... And then for the middle, I'm going to kind of change the position of this. And though again, I know part of it's going to be covered up, so I'm not worried that it's overlapping. It does look pretty viney, so I think that's pretty cool looking. So let me just clean this off. That looks pretty good. All right, so that's going to be the base. And if you don't have this, this actually coordinates well with the uh, Magnolia set. It's kind of like a, they were kind of like a two for one almost, if you think. They kind of coordinate together, but you could use both of them on their own. But I got this because I love the vines in it. This is pretty neat too because you can... um mix and match these but then I also really like the sentiments it's really pretty and then you have this little blossom that goes nicely so we're going to move on to this put this on the side I have this here all right so now I have a couple of these a couple stamps out I'm going to do this with crafting I'm going to go ahead and turn the um embossing gun on again to heat up or the embossing tool whatever it is we want to call it so I'm going to turn that on to heat up so it's going to be a little bit um louder 
All right, so one more time, and I'm gonna use my embossing buddy again just to be on the safe side. So this time we're gonna do white craft ink. And I think I'm gonna do two, even though I probably could just do one, I'm gonna do half and half. So we'll do one and two. And then I'm gonna to try to be quick to dump. Now that white craft ink is a pigment ink, so it definitely is more similar to the Versamark where it will stay wet longer, but it also depends on how frequently you re-inked it, and mine has been a little bit since it's been re-inked. So I'm gonna take my brush again. I do have a couple marks here, and I'm gonna brush these off. I'm not sure why they stuck considering I used white ink, but maybe there's a little bit stuck on the block. So there's that. And let me just clean this up. All right, and now I'm gonna heat it. Now I didn't think about it. I do have this sticky tape on the back, so I'm gonna be a little careful when I heat this from the back because I don't want to set that on fire. That wouldn't be a good start to crafting. Guess I can always put it in my coffee if I need to put it out. Okay, that's pretty good. Let me see. If there's any spots that don't look melted? No, that looks right here. One little bit. Okay, so there we go. So that's the third one. So that's gonna sit on here, just like that, which I like this one because I think the really, okay, so here's what we've learned thus far. Let me wipe this off real quick so I don't end up dropping this somehow on my project. Other thing is too, when you have a stamp set, if you haven't used it before, especially photopolymer, not, this doesn't really apply to the rubber. Um, you want to do one of two things if you haven't used it before. Either take the photopolymer and like put it on your hand, or you can even take like a cloth and just kind of rub the edge of it and then wipe it off because it does make it ink better onto the, especially when you have a detailed looking stamp. So I don't have my trash can. Okay, so here's what we have. We have three different ones. This should be, yeah, this is dry. So three different cards, and we just have to finish these. But I think they're really, really neat, just depending on what you want to do. I think if I had a choice, I would definitely go back and um, do the white embossing on this. I really like the white embossing. What do you guys think? I think the white embossing really makes it pop against the background. And I do like the Versamark on it. I think it's really pretty. But I also like the tone on tone. I really think it adds something to it. So, yes, I'm definitely going to add some dimension to this. All right, so now we just have to finish these up with some sort of a sentiment. So here's what we're going to do. So we'll go ahead and do this first. And I'm going to put this away so I don't make a whoopsie. And I'll get rid of that. I think since we have this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with um, black or maybe basic gray for the sentiments just because I think it's going to pop super nice that way. So what I'm going to do is, and we'll do these again a couple different ways. I'm going to add, let me cut some of these up. There's one more. I'm going to add something to a couple of these. So only thing I have to remember is sometimes I can't remember if something is or is not a current, let's say a color, but you know what I mean? Like a current ribbon. So I think I'm going to add just a little something to this because I think it'll make it look, just kind of jazz it up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and use 
just a little bit of snail. So I'll start with this and I don't want it to be tight. I just want it to be across. So go like that. Oops. That's what happens when you use your paper snips for things that are not paper. So there's that. We're going to put that just to make sure that's pushed down. Okay. And then I'm going to add some dimensionals to this. Okay. All right, so that will be one. And I do need, still need to figure out a sentiment. So I'm not going to put this on here quite yet because I want to figure out what I want to do. So we could do, I mean, we could certainly do something that's in these. But I think what I want to do is something like one of those one-line things that will fit in one line. Like, thanks for being there for me. That would be a nice one. We could do that. Here's to celebrating you. Um, to see for is one thing to put this on the inside. Congratulations. I think I'm going to do this one is, as thanks for being there for me because I have a lot of these little scraps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this one here. And let's see. I'm going to do this one in black and we'll see what it looks like. If I don't like it, we can always restamp it. Nope, oh, I picked the wrong one. How do you like that? They all start to look the same when they're tiny. Okay. So I'm going to just stamp this on here. I'm going to go over just a little. Oops, I goofed that one. And that's a little gummy. All right. Ah, I had all these white scraps and now I have none. I always have more. Okay. So I clean this off and I'm going to just tap gently. I think I'm being a little too. Okay. That one's fine. The there is still just a little dark, but. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pop. We have this popped up. We have our little piece of ribbon. I'm gonna, mm, I would have loved to have moved that up a little bit, but I already put it down. And we're going to put this on here. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to flag the ends of this. So you can do this one of two ways. You could take um, your little um, banner triple punch if you wanted to. Or what I tend to do is just kind of cut in the middle like that. So, and depending how far up I want it, I usually will cut at least a little bit and then cut to the middle, cut to the middle. And because I cannot leave well enough alone, what color is this? Seaside Spray. I finally got my markers in that I forgot to order with my other pre-order and I'm going to just go along the end. Oh, this one's a little scrappy. I got to fix this one. I have one end that looks good and the other one that looks not very angled, which is why I didn't go up too close in case I had to fix it. There you go. So that's nice. So then I'm going to just put this on just with snail. You can put it on that. You can put it on this. I'm just going to put it directly on. Wow, man, the size of that turned out like perfect, didn't it? Okay, then all I'm going to do is take off my dimensional backs and put this on. Okay. And pop this one on here. Yeah, it's a little crooked. Okay, so there's one. So that was cute. Pretty simple, right? So you have this one. For this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the congratulations because I really like that. And actually, I'm going to completely um, digress from where I said I was going to do it the first time 
and I'm going to do this one in. Mm, I don't know if I want to do it in Coastal Cabana or if I want to do it in Bermuda Bay. I think Coastal Cabana would pop more only because it'll be like the back, the front, the back again. Oh, I love VersaFine too. I have that as well. The only thing you want to remember, if you've never used this before, I love VersaFine ink. It is a pigment ink, so it does take time to dry. So you have to be careful because you will smudge everything you use. So remember that it takes longer to dry. All right, so let's see about this one. Oh, stamped that pretty well on. That was a shocker. And this one. I clearly did not put any adhesive on yet because it's falling off. So I have to do that one. I have to finish. <laughs> I have to finish adding my um my stickers to the back of my stamps. Now this one, what we could do is we could put this one on here flat and we could put this across like that for something different, but I don't know how that's gonna look. Let's see. We could do it like that up at the top. I don't think I like that so much, though. What do you guys think? I'm going to leave enough room just in case you all are like, that's the best idea ever. So what we would do is if we did it that way, I would do this flat. And then put the congratulations there. Obviously trim these to the ends. You could white emboss it. That would be another great idea, too. Yep. So the middle. All right. So we're going to go with the middle. Thanks, Judy. I'm going to try see if I can replicate what I did already. And then the only one we have left is our lovely lipstick. Oh, that looks cute. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I know this has this on here, but I'm going to put um, dimensionals on this to pop it up. Anyway, see if I can get one more corner. I need to get my trash can back because I'm starting to lose my marbles because I keep going to throw stuff away <laughs> and it's not there. Let's see. All right, let's so do that. Oh, this bad boy doesn't want to come off. This is from the the mini. There we go. If you ever have trouble getting yours off, the old paper piercer, mine has a little bit of a hook on it, which is probably a defect, but it works really good at getting the backs of the dimensionals off. It's funny because I ordered a second one. I called and said, you know, my, my uh, paper piercer was goofed up. So they ended up sending me the new style, but I didn't get rid of the old one. It just goes to show you why, because it came in handy for something else. So same thing again. And just for a little bit added extra oomph, what I will do, where did I, I lost those. I'm going to put a couple of these on the back and we'll pop this up on the front. These are just the mini ones only because this is what I have handy. Here. I think it looks nice there. I think you're right, Judy. That looks pretty. Let me just center this a little bit. It's a little off center. You can certainly get out your ruler if you wanted to, but I think that looks pretty good considering, really. Again, this was time consuming only because we, I didn't have any plans planned out. So the last one I'm going to do in black. So here's this, and I'm going to do the VersaFine for all of you who have never seen the VersaFine, but just remind me, don't touch it because I don't want to goof it up. So we have, congratulations I did. I'm going to grab one more thing. Itty Bitty Greetings has a lot of really nice kind of like one-liner across something or other. Even hope you're feeling better. Sending prayers would be a nice one. I know this is a pink card. You might be like, really? But, you know, something that will at least um, cheer you up. How about I'm here for you? That's a nice one. We'll do that one. And again, this is another one that I still need to mount that I did not. So, let's see. Find a small block. 
that's the one thing. I have so many stamps that I really need to like take the time and mount. And I should do that at night when we're watching TV or something. Let me just wipe this one. So nice. Okay. So I'm going to leave this alone for a minute. I'm going to kind of see what I would do. You could even put this on and kind of like let this one go to the side. Like we could flag this part off and let this be here to the side. In the meantime, though, I would like to add something else to it. So I'm going to look over here and see what ribbons I might have. They could potentially be. Oh, hopefully. I don't know. I'm hoping this one isn't gone. The petal pink. Watch my luck. I think this is in the new catalog because that would be pretty too. We can even do like a little faux knot and wrap it around. A little faux bow. We could do a little real bow. You regretted mounting all yours before. I know, me too. But now that I have all this extra sticker stuff, if I mount them, they stay. And you don't even need big pieces. I mean, that's the cool part about it. So, I'm sorry. I'm just killing time waiting for that ink to dry. I could probably hit it with my heat tool, but... Let's see. We'll make this a super pretty girly card. It's hard for you to cover the design. I feel the exact same way. I know. I know just what you mean. We could even wrap this one this way. Was this a top opening card? Yeah. You could even do this at the bottom. Put this on top. I don't know. The way it is, I think that would be too much pink. Let's see. Let me grab one other one. This is always nice, too. The white. Yeah. I'm just going to put a strip of this on because I like this. And what I'll do is... I'm just going to mount this just to the front. So I'm going to see if I can cut this straight. Just like that. Now, I am going to go ahead and get out my fast fuse. I know you all love that. That is sarcastic in case you didn't know. <laughs> because this really holds stuff down. So I'm going to take that. Just put this on the front. I am going to trim it. I just wanted to make sure I had it straight first. So I'm going to put that on there. And put this on there. There you go. That'll be nice. I'm going to trim this off on the edge. If you were doing a multi-layer card. Oh heavens. If you are doing a multi-layer card. Ooh, oopsie. Sorry about that again. <laughs> you could um, wrap this around so it was hidden. So keep that in mind. Sorry, myself and the camera aren't getting along today. I keep making you all nauseous. There we go. All right, so if I can put that back without wrecking it. All right, and then we're just going to wrap this up. So that was the uh, flax, the white flax ribbon. And I'm going to grab, I think I have some bigger dimensionals here. Yep. I'm going to just grab a couple dimensionals, put this on the back, and then we're going to add that sentiment because that should definitely be dry by now. Then we will be heading off to IHOP for breakfast. Woohoo! Any of you guys have a favorite breakfast place that you go? Ours is always, almost always, you know, the rainbow stamper tends to pick where we eat, but it's almost always IHOP. <laughs> but I like IHOP. Put that there. All right, so what do we decide for this one? Do we want to put it on the side? So what I could do is like flag the end of this. And let me show you what I would what I'm meaning and if not we can always trim it off if you guys don't think it looks good so what we could do is we could put this here and kind of have this part here cut off so do we like that or is that too sided Lisa likes the side the dotted white ribbon that would work you like the side all right we're going to go with the side so I'm going to have to put a few dimensionals on the back of this just because the height of this I want to match so let's see if I have one here and one, let's see about where I would need it. Right here. I'm going to put one more in just in case, and then we'll trim off the excess. And then what I am going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of snail in the middle just so it holds onto that 
layered piece. All right. Oh, look, see what I mean? It's still slightly wet. I smudged it. Too late now. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to end up having to have add a doodad or send it out to someone who doesn't wear their glasses when they open their cards. <laughs> All right, so there you go. So three relatively simple cards. If you have your stuff all picked out, let me move these out of the way so I can show you. You certainly could have also like added your um, your flirty flamingo to the edge of this just to kind of pop the edge up a little bit if you wanted to, to kind of make that stand out. Let me clear all this debris off of here and then I will show you the three cards that we finished. So again, we did this. We did these in this order. So this one over here is Versamark onto the paper, just in case you were late coming in. And then we use White Craft ink onto the darker color. So this was Seaside Spray and Pretty Peacock. And then this was the Magnolia piece of ribbon that we added. The second card, we ended up doing uh, Flirty Flamingo. We stamped in Flirty Flamingo onto Flirty Flamingo. And then we used Versamark and White embossing powder and this was flirty flamingo and lovely lipstick so that was really pretty and then I think the one that stands out the most and I like the white the best so I think this is a good idea because it's white craft ink and then white embossing powder so I think it gives a super white color so this one was coastal cabana we use coastal cabana ink and then we stamped this in white pigment ink so white craft ink and then white heat embossed it and then put our little sentiment. But pretty simple cards. They all pretty much have the same design. Again, like I said, if you wanted to add something to kind of mirror the inside, what you could always do is you could either take this piece, put it in here, and then you could cut a smaller um, stitched nested label die and then you could put your sentiment on it. You could even cut this so it was in half and then just have like half of it. So if you can imagine this part's not there. And then you could have half of it hanging down and then stamp your sentiment below. You could also cut it in half lengthwise if you wanted to and just kind of put it on there. Obviously, I know it wouldn't work for this card because this is if it was a this way opening card. But you can cut it in half the other way and add it. So you could certainly add something else to the inside, which kind of mirrors and decorates it. You could even do the same thing where you just added a little bit of Versa marking to this to kind of put it on the inside and then put your sentiment on top of it. So definitely lots of different things that you can do. I hope you all enjoyed these cards. They were very fun and very simple to make and I even surprised myself that they turned out better than what I had pictured in my head considering we haven't made them before. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you'd like to get any of these supplies and more you can go to my online store 24-7 reach the stamper.stampinup.net. Um, again don't forget through the end of August through August 31st you can join my team which is the Rainbow Stampers. Love to have you on my team. You can purchase stuff from the new catalog as part of your custom starter kit. You can pick anything you want. There's not a specific kit. You could buy $155 worth of whisper white paper if you wanted or you could buy lots of other stuff and then you also get a ten dollar bonus coupon to use the month after you join so it's kind of like getting a free shipping or free little extra something that you could add to your um, collection so if you have any questions about that you can send me an email at reach the stamper at gmail.com also if you don't have a demonstrator I would love to be your demonstrator all you have to do is send me your full mailing address and I'll be happy to send you out a catalog and I'll be getting my holiday catalogs on Friday so I'll send you an annual catalog which is the big one and then a holiday holiday catalog as soon as I get them in on Friday. If you do already have a demonstrator, you can request one from them. But if you don't have one, I'm here for you. So thank you guys so much for joining. I will see you back here again next Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time if I don't happen to pop in sometime before then. I hope you all have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining.